Frosty morning in Epping. Perfect time for a walk. So it's mid morning and look, it's still frost on the pavement here in Epping. So the plan today is to uh, go out to North Weald Airfield, Aerodrome. Never been there, I often see the planes when I'm doing these walks out here. But I've never actually been out to the aerodrome, so that would be cool. And then I want to walk out to Ongar. Never walked out to Ongar. I went out there to the Dial House, the notorious Dial House, to visit Henny Rambo and G Voucher, and that was a magical experience. But I've always wanted to walk out there from Epping, so I'm going to do that today. It would be lovely to get a sight of the railway, on the, uh, the steam trains on the uh, rail line, wouldn't it? So that's the plan for today. They call this the lower forest and it's a little sort of triangle of land separated from the main body of Epping Forest. I've never actually walked through here before so good time to do it. Eh? E.N. Buxton, Edward North Buxton, one of the uh, people responsible for preserving Epping Forest. For the people of London and author of, for me, the definitive Epping Forest guide. It's called Epping Forest and it was originally published in, oh, I don't know, 1890 something? My edition I think is from 1914 or 1909. Well he says that this is a great place for a summer walk. Being as he's a man who knows a bit about the forest, you have to take his words very seriously but uh, I'm ignoring them today. He said it gets too boggy in the winter months. It's very wet and boggy. Hoping the iciness will have trapped some of it in. Got a magical little pond here in the lower forest. I see sort of bodies of water in a forest setting like this. It always evokes sort of myths and fairy tales and what have you. Combination of the Lady of the Lake, trolls, Yoda, <laughs> serpents. and bracken and ferns. Quite magical. I just had a really lovely chat with a fella back there walking his dog and he told me there's a herd of deer down here, about 40 or 50 of them. They ran away from his dog so I don't know if they've just been scattered but hopefully I'll see them. That'd be lovely wouldn't it? smell my Marks and Spencer's roast turkey sandwich and they're off. Wow. Magical stuff, eh? So this path through the forest here, according to Buxton, it's an old bridleway that led out to uh, Harlow. really planned to spend an hour walking around in the lower forest but uh, it's been so beguiling I can't wrench myself away from it. The North Weald Airfield was, is over there, on the side of that hedge, you've got to find the way in. Ah, oh, just been reading about it on my phone. Important uh, fighter station during uh, World War II, during the Battle of Britain. Established in 1916, during the First World War. 
is an RAF airfield. For a moment that seemed like a, there you go, here's another one. I'm imagining a Hawker Hurricanes taking off. I think a lot of these are training aircraft. I think they do a lot of pilot training here. Hurricane Way. It's the name after the aeroplane that was flown from here during the Second World War. And here's the memorial. There's a reference there to Norsk. Norsk. Norway. There's a Norway house over the road, so I guess maybe some Norwegian pilots flew from here during the Battle of Britain. This is more than 50 squadrons from seven nations served from North World, from Canada, Czechoslovakia, New Zealand, Norway, Poland and the United Kingdom and the United States. So here's the airfield. North Weald Airfield. I guess that must be a hurricane there. I uh, haven't quite worked out the way to uh, Ongar, or well, certainly the way between here and the pass to Ongar, but this looks as promising as anything, really. A concrete path leading into a thicket. Ruins of an old brick building in the undergrowth here, not far from the airfield, so... I guess this must be part of the old uh, Second World War military infrastructure. It's just on the edge of a new housing estate. So you see the way these worlds overlap. The past and the present intertwined. This is a classic bit of kind of scrubby open land on the edge of a new housing estate. A sort of suburban development laps up against the countryside and old industrial land. So a classic landscape to explore when you're a kid and then re-explore when you're a middle-aged man. <laughs> I now have to navigate my way across those areas you get that sit between Ordnance Survey maps. <laughs> I know that's not supposed to happen, but I don't know I've not got a great chart of couple of maps. But try as I might, I, I can't uh, find the, the gap between the two. It seems to be a very short section between Northwell Bassett and Tyler's Green. Not covered. At certain times of the year when the walks are particularly sort of memorable, one of them is around Easter. In the evenings you're starting to get long and so you start to push out further afield and walk into the evening and that's really lovely. And another is this week here between Christmas and New Year. And the walks I do in this period always really stick in the mind. I'm way ahead now in the last sort of hour and a bit of light. Still icy up here hasn't thawed off all day. This is a beautiful view, looking east. And here's the Epping to Ongar Railway, the old disused section of the Central Line where they now run steam trains, and they're running them today. I was hoping to see one as I was walking along here, but no luck. The last one leaves Ongar at half past three. It's 2.37 now. I don't think I'll make it in time. I could try that, couldn't I? That'd be a really lovely way to come home. Wow, this is just perfect. 
a little lake lying between me and the other <laughs> the other side of this bridge. The tower, so I can walk along this ledge here, this icy ledge. Hmm. Wish me luck. Here comes the train. Ah, uh, looks like a slightly disappointing old diesel train. No steam train today. Oh, here's the steam at the back. So now down this little country lane with the danger of going round in the circle. So I must remember to turn off east at some point down here. A warning here, a bull and a cow with calves. That means there's a potential for getting gored by an angry bull. Most first time for everything. Just went to, uh, I went to check with the, uh, <laughs> the people in the farmhouse there in the lodge. And they said, oh, don't worry, the ball's not out there at the moment. Otherwise, that would have made this <laughs> a really nervous walk. When I was a kid, I remember being in a field with an angry bull, and my dad just, <laughs> it, it did charge us, and my dad just threw me over a hedge. <laughs> shortly followed by himself. Uh, <laughs> never had that encounter since then. Wow, this is quite a, <laughs> a tall style, it's like a great big platform. Right, this is where I head east again. <laughs> This is a walk I've been intending to do. We'll get a couple of years and, you know, like a lot of them, you sort of put it off and put it off. Today just seemed like the perfect day. And it certainly is. No, did you, did it catch that today? Not today, no, no. Water tower here, near Blake Hall. Well, <laughs> what a magical experience. Meeting a fella out hunting with his hawk, a Harris hawk. Really lovely guy. We had a walk down to Toot Hill together, which was really lovely. He's telling me all about it. Got two hawks there. Fascinating, thing you see when you go out walking. About half an hour till sunset now. Not sure I'm going to make it to Ongar in the light, but hopefully we can get there via footpaths. Very deep drainage ditch has been cut across this field here. Unfortunately for me, I think that's the continuation of the footpath on the far side. Hmm, oh well. These are some of the things you have to contend with when you're out for a walk. It's not all just meeting people with their uh, Harris Hawks. Sun's starting to set now over the brow of that hill. I'm going to go up to Greenstead and then try and find some transport home. But who knows? This journey is far from over. What a beautiful sunset. Climbing up the hill here towards Greenstead Green. I don't trust myself to never get across the fields in the dark to Chipping Onga. So I'm going to see if I can get some transport from Greenstead Green. Otherwise, I might have to road walk it to Onga. Oh, wow, it's been majestic. So, this is probably my last uh, walk and video of 2017. Wow, what an amazing year of walking it's been. Thank you so much for accompanying me on these walks. It's been brilliant to have you along. Who knows what 2018 will bring, eh? More walking. <laughs>